Sticking with cricket or the lack thereof. Sabina Park isn't the only prominent cricket ground across the region that will not host games during the 2024 T20 World Cup. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis and Grenada also decided against bidding for the marquee event. The decision by the St. Kitts and Nevis government has not gone down well with the country's cricket association, whose president, David Phillip, has been expressing his disappointment. All right, so this is what he says. In terms of why St. Kitts and Nevis has not been selected as a venue, it's actually a matter beyond the control of the St. Kitts Cricket Association. The decision that was not made, as some people indicate, is a decision by the Ministry of Sports and, of course, the government as a whole. We're really sorry that something was not done or an investment was not made to be able to facilitate the upcoming 2024 World Cup. He continues, the World Cup is not just a sport. It is also a tourism spin-off and tourism is one of our biggest industries outside of citizenship by investment. Sports tourism can actually play a part that can keep us going and the economy floating when the actual cruise tourism is off. Well, joining us to shed more light on this issue is Andrew Huey, News and Sports Editor for SKN Newsline. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you on set with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I love in the studio, by the way. And a nice shirt. Uh, yes. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. I kind of have to represent. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you definitely... Disappointed season, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with this issue. You know, we've really spoken about it extensively here in relation to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So your initial thoughts on the fact that your country didn't even bid for such a massive yeah. event. It is, is it disappointing. Um, cricket fans are, are disappointed, as you heard from the president of the SKCA. Um, they are disappointed. They practically tried to see if bids could have been submitted. Even when the bids, the extension of the deadline was granted, they were still trying to see if a last-ditch effort could have been made. But as the report indicated, they didn't have the backing of the, the Minister of Sports, the Ministry of Sports. Yeah. Um, interestingly, we, the only thing we've heard so far from the government um, came from the Minister of Sports a few weeks ago. Um, where he said that, well, the reason given was that the venue was not up to par. In yes, terms of limited resources. Yes, right. and, and, and they would not have been able to get it ready in time for the, for the World Cup. Um, but that didn't sit well with Mr. Mr. Philip from the SKCA. In fact, he believes that if there was a, a real intention to get the games here in St. Kitts, that all efforts could have been pulled off to have the, the venue ready in time to have these games. So um, they're not happy that that is the case. Yeah, and talk to me about the population of St. Kitts and Nevis. What's been the, the mood like, you know, after this news came out? Well, I remember when the story came out. I think the story came on CMC on the weekend, on Friday. And um, it was just a floor of comments on, on social media. People were like, well, why is it that we're not hosting games? So people are disappointed. And considering that, you know, St. Kitts and Nevis has a CPL franchise, the yes. Patriots. People come out in their numbers to the Patriots games. Um, this past year, I mean, this past season, um, we had some good support at the Warner Park. So people are looking forward to seeing international cricket. In addition to that, um, St. Kitts Nevis has made some investment over the years for Warner Park. Um, lights were installed a few years ago. A jumbotron was installed there. So a lot of additions were made since the 2007 World Cup at the Warner Park to host international games. So to miss an opportunity like this with all that investment made is disappointing and baffling to say the least. Yeah. Having said that, Andrew, you would have heard the lengthy discussions we just had with Chris Daring and Dr. Akshay Man Singh, um, referencing what they said. C mm -hmm. Could you connect with, with some of the points they were making? Yeah, I, I think the points, well, the points they made were, were, were spot on um, in the sense that cricket brings a lot of value, and especially an international event like this, brings a lot of monetary value to, to the nations that host these games. Uh, and St. Kitts Nevis is no exception. We've seen reports time after time from the CPL indicating the dollar value of hosting games in the respective countries. Um, St. Kitts Nevis is, you know, is a small environment, small country. When you have an international event like this, it 
instantly boosts the, the, tours, the, the economic activity there. So for example, you have hotels. The hotels are all booked up. In fact, I was just having a, a discussion offset just before coming here, and um, we were pointing out the fact that the room stock and the hotel stock in St. Kitts is, is adequate to accommodate the, the fans and the, the numbers of people that will be coming into the stadium and coming in to watch a Cricket World Cup. So, and again, because of the size, five minutes away from the venue. It's not a long drive to get from Frigate Bay, where the hotels are, yeah. to Warner Park in Bastyr. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of advantages that uh, St. Kitts offers mm -hmm. in hosting the games. And for not having it, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, can you, can you speak to any degree on the quality of representation that the St. Kitts Cricket Association would have presented? Because as uh, Chris and Dr. Mansing just pointed out, um, the onus is on yeah. the, Jamaica, the Jamaica Cricket Association in this right. instance, but mm -hmm. in the St. Kitts um, position, to ensure that they produce a document that is irresistible mm -hmm. and, um, and able to influence a decision in, 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 their, in their favor. I, ca I can't speak definitively to what exactly they would have done in terms of documentation and the argument they would have put forward. Yeah. However, if we were to go based on the press release that they sent out, it had a lot. They would have made the case for the economic impact that hosting the games would have had. And again, considering that St. Kitts Nevis has a history of hosting, they had the World Cup in 2007. You also, we also hosted the, uh, under 90, the ICC Under-19 World Cup last year at two venues, Warner Park and the Connery Cricket Grounds. Mm -hmm. So again, you have a track record of hosting international events, cricket in particular. Mm -hmm. You know what the economic impact. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not too sure what the reasoning was for the decision. Of course, the minister did say it was the, the venue needed to be mm -hmm. upgraded, but you know, it could have been much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if we've reached the end of this story. I think there's more to come out of it. Do you think they missed the beat in the fact that it's not only about the cricket and the amount of seats that will be sold, but the fact that it can, and I will use this term, cricket carnival, because we're just mm -hmm. coming out of CPL. And I'm using the term, of course, very lightly. Right. Because when you think about carnival, you think about an explosion of culture, because I come from carnival country. Right. Right? There are so many things you can do around the cricket to highlight St. Kitts and Nevis right. as a country or the culture of the people and to put you on the biggest stage because we're talking World Cup viewership. And again, uh, Mariah, I, that is again the baffling part of it because St. Kitts and Nevis, aside from cricket, St. Kitts and Nevis has the, the, the record, the track record of hosting international events. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the St. Kitts Music Festival. Yes. Happens every year for the past 20 plus years. Um, there have been reports that show that hosting the St. Kitts Music Festival every year generates economic activity outside of the festival itself. Again, you're talking about hotel rooms, you're talking about restaurants. You cannot get a car to rent during the, 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 the oh St. Kitts Music Festival. So you could imagine having a Cricket World Cup after 16 years come into to, to the shores of St. Kitts Nevis. The, just the economic boost that would be for the small businesses in the area and the larger businesses as well. Um, in addition to that, again, just even from a logistical standpoint, um, again, because of hosting all these international events, the expertise is there to ensure that logistically carrying out the, the, the activities and the fringe activities that are necessary to keep the interest level, mm -hmm. the, the expertise is there. So do you feel like so, there's so, so I, I, I cannot. I, can't, I really can't explain why the decision wasn't made to have it. So Lance, you know, when we talk about these things, right, because we've interviewed people surrounding Jamaica, and now we're speaking to him. So it appears that everything is in place for both countries that we've explored. So then what says you? Yeah, but, you know, I want to also come from the government standpoint, because as I made the point in the previous segment about governments having far more than sport mm -hmm. to, to govern and preside over, the economic outlook for St. Kitts and Nevis has been pretty strong in the past year. Uh, they did have a, a rebound in economic mm -hmm. growth in the past year coming out of um, COVID, COVID. the COVID mm -hmm. periods, and there was a GDP 9% um, growth that I, 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 I gather. Mm -hmm. So th the economy in St. Kitts and Nevis at the moment isn't, isn't bad. So with an opportunity to get a Cricket World Cup um, on the plate for the country just seems to have been 
a, an investment that they could have, stroke should have made. Yeah, and, that, and that's why I say it's a missed opportunity. Um, and, and also why I say that I don't think that we're going to hear the end of this, because mm -hmm. normally the government has a monthly press conference, so I'm sure this question is going to come up again to the sports minister. Mm -hmm. But if we were to use the explanation given by the minister in the sense of the venue itself needed some work, um, the question would have been how much would that cost um, and how long would it have taken to, got, to have gotten all those infrastructure uh, repairs and whatever needs to be done in time for the World Cup. Yeah. Um, the SKCA seems to believe or they're confident that whatever fixtures that needed to be done would have been able to be done in time to have the World Cup and to be able to host the games. Mm -hmm. So they're not convinced that that would have, was an adequate enough excuse. Yeah. I, I know you're a newsman and um, you, you have been affiliated with, with sporting associations, have you, in, in the past? Yeah. yeah. Cricket and football? Uh, football mostly. Yeah, cricket as well, but yeah. football currently, yes. Yeah. Um, what would you suggest is the, on a scale of one to ten, the, the appetite of the average uh, St. Kitts and Nevis um, person mm -hmm. with regard to sport? Well, if I could use football for an example, mm -hmm. just last night, or two nights ago actually, we are in the final few games of the SKNFA Premier League, uh, which is the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association Premier League. Best of three series. Game two was on Tuesday night. Stadium filled to capacity. The Warner Park Football Stadium is actually right next to the cricket stadium. Yeah. So it's one. Um, when you venue. say capacity, what's the attendance? Um, we're, we're looking at over 1,400, 1,600 um, people. And we're talking about the bleachers filled to capacity. We're talking about the stands filled. And the atmosphere was just euphoric. It was just fantastic. Um, the game three, so it, now it's, the series is tied one apiece. So game three is going to be on Friday night. And I'm sure we're going to have a, a, a huge turnout for mm -hmm. those games. So. To answer your question, sports is a big thing in St. Kitts Nevis. Of course, it depends on the sport. Um, some sports more than others. Yeah. Um, outside of football, you also have basketball, which is also... And the thing about St. Kitts, especially St. Kitts, is that sports is community-driven. Mm -hmm. So you have, for example, the two teams in the, f in the football finals, Village Superstars, St. Paul's United. Represent communities. The, the communities come out in their numbers. Yes. And, and they're very loyal, very loyal fans. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you find that that community drive, you know, is what drive, what one, drive the players and the teams, and it, two, um, it, it encourages that community atmosphere. So mm -hmm. when you go to a, a, a game, you're, you're seeing the fans coming out in their numbers, representing not just the team, but representing the community. There's a community pride that comes along with mm -hmm. playing sports in St. Kitts especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what's for sure is, you know, any country will feel, and I'm talking about the fans, will feel a bit demotivated and disappointed when things happen like this. However, we're going to continue to dig deeper, as we mm. said at the top of the show. We're continuing to highlight the issues. And, of course, we want to hear from all the different sides. You yeah. know, not just us, because I'd love if the government could come talk to us, too, or those well, making I'm sure the big they will. decisions. I'm, I'm sure they will. Like I said, th this is not the end of this. I'm sure the, you know, the government will provide a, an explanation as to why, yeah. um, especially seeing a lot of people are now asking. And, uh, of course, the SKCA, they've given their side of the story. Yeah. So we just have to wait and see. Yeah, well, I want to thank you so much for stopping yes. by. Um, thanks. thanks for having me. On the sports Pleasure night to be soon. here. And I'm hoping I can come back. Definitely. Soon. <laughs> Catch soon. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back.